We are back. Extra bases. Bristol and Booth. Jeremy, did you do your homework? I did. I gave you homework. I did it. All right. The homework revolves around something that both, both of us know and love. It is a certain saying, relievers are... Volatile. Relievers are volatile. And we bring this up because of the recent struggles of a certain closer for the Houston Astros. Um, I asked you to take a look at what Roberto Osuna is doing or not doing. Yeah. And what is he doing or not doing? Well, because he is struggling. This is a guy that's been really good for a long time. You know, as far as what the baseball has been, right? It's been really good for a long time. Um, I believe at the start of the year, we, you know, he had a. You talked about how much you. Yeah, I mean, you know, I my prediction on Sports Extra that w- is he would set a new Astros team record for most saves in a season, and he looked to be on that pace. Well, on that pace, and actually ahead of it, and 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 having a. Uh, a a rec- you know record type season, right? Certainly here. However, relievers are volatile, right? And what that means is that they can fluctuate, and it's part of how they're wired, and part of what they're reliant on, and and part of the things that they do. And, and that really means, in this particular case, fastball and something to protect that fastball. And right now, just you know, you, you told me to watch the inning, mm-hmm. the last outing, and I got to confess, I watched part of it. I watched okay. three or four hitters, and I had enough. And here we go. And the consistent factors here are he's not repeating his release point his stride's a little short he's flying his front side he's showing the ball hitters can see it they're not bothered by the bit by their takes that's how you tell there's no no indecision on what they're doing there's no people on their front side there's none of that um and he's missing with the breaking ball consistently which allows him to sit fastball if you know that you're getting a fastball for a strike and the breaking ball is the one you have to worry about man that's called good hitting it's happy hunting, right? And that's what they're doing. And they're just sitting power, and when they get it, they're swinging. Now, if you're not repeating your release point and can't execute your breaking ball, most of the time it's going to translate to location with your fastball. doesn't mean you won't throw strikes. It just means you're going to miss in a part of the zone you don't usually miss, and that's what's happened here. He also missed, though, with his fastball in a part of the zone that nobody misses in, and that's behind the hitter the other day <laughs> and clipped him in the back and or the back of the leg and – that's not – I mean, that tells you something's really wrong when you miss by two feet in the big leagues. So he's not able to repeat what he's doing, and and he's earned the right to work through it, having been as good as he is and certainly as, as good as he's been for this team. We'll see if he does. It's correctable. It's not analytic. It's body feel, and it's brain function. It's interesting that you mention it's not analytical. Being that it's not based on a bunch of numbers, yeah. Do you, the Astros – Brent Strom, I know he's been ill, but they have to have diagnosed this, right? Let's see, how do I answer that? Um, that was a good one. That was a good one. You don't get me very often. You got me on that one. That, uh, you got to hope so. You got to hope so. I hope that they're not as myopic or not so myopic that they're eliminating the human feel component out of it. And they still have coaches who can see that. I know Brent Strom can. I'm sure AJ can, right? How they're getting it to him. Again, every player is different. I saw AJ had a, a comment the other day that I happened to see where about talking about when guys get hit by pitches. You know, some guys want the attention, some guys don't. I mean, it's everybody's different. So it could be something where they've kind of mentioned it to him um, or they're letting him feel his way through it. Because look, let's be honest, they're the best team in the West. At least in this particular run, they were playing Baltimore. They were in the white in Chicago before that. Mm-hmm. So it's a time to work through this if you're going to work through it and, and find your stride. But I got to believe, I'm not talking about the front office, but the coaches on the field see it and they can address it. How long does it take? How long does it take to, to fix something like that? Well, they say it's, and this is something I heard a long time ago, it takes 21 days of consistent you know, repetition to change muscle memory. So it's going to take a minute. Somewhere he got out of sync and got to work your way back. And for a hitter, it's no different than it bats. It bats build on it bats, and you got to be able to have that um, to find rhythm when you get lose sink and get in sync and get out of sync so he for this guy his money is made in the ninth inning and he's on a a team has a chance to win the world series so you got to figure it's going to take him a couple more outings to get through it and so one day it's just going to click and no one's going to realize it until he goes out there and man it's 95 here and it's 96 there and the breaking ball is a strike and now hitters are uncomfortable again and we're missing we're getting soft contact and not just going for swings and misses so um I got to believe he'll get out of it because of who he is but you know what sometimes guys goes into funk especially relievers and they don't get out of it because relievers are volatile. You were a catcher. If you were behind the plate, huh? 
Uh, no, I was just saying at one time. Yeah. One time. <laughs> at one time, you. I said you were. That yeah, was no, past. yeah, yeah. It just feels like 79 years ago. Go ahead. You were a catcher once. As a catcher with a guy struggling the way Osuna is, do you offer mental advice, mechanical advice, all of the above? How would you approach it, it depends, a situation like this one? It depends on the pitcher's personality, so you can't cookie cut that, right? But with this guy, knowing his personality, I'd probably just look at him. You okay? Everything all right? Feeling good? You sure? Want to talk about it? feel better and something to, to lighten the mood a little bit mm -hmm. and then i'd go out there and I'd make adjustments for him and martin maldonado is every bit of a an excellent defensive catcher so he's going to figure that out but it all depends on the kid on the pitcher's personality um ken giles is a guy that i'm not sure that would have worked with yeah you know but this guy seems to be somebody that's focused and intense and probably somebody who wants to have a little bit of fun and so you could probably get to him that way um well, all these, all people want to feel is that it's not the end of the world, you know. And, and pitchers, man, when you got twelve of them, they are. It's like one big therapy session every single day, you know. And you just you want to make sure that you're working through each guy and how you connect each guy and what's going to make him tick. So, I would imagine that with this guy, that's how I do it. But wouldn't, that's not necessarily how I do it with Granky. You know, Granky's probably going to go watch video. He's probably going to want to break that down, and Osuna's going to want to feel his way through. It's just I could be completely wrong. Just perception, I doubt. The Astros, of course, coming off that uh, epic trade. Yeah. Josh Rojas is the first guy to make the bigs. Yeah. Although, that might not be surprising because he kind of was the, the one that was farthest along. That's who they wanted. Of the, of the guys they had, that's who they wanted. Well, it's funny you say that because jeff luno said on the broadcast uh i believe on the astros radio network the broadcast before uh, a sunday game he had mentioned that that was really the one guy that the diamondbacks were someone shaking their head the diamondbacks were not going to make a trade unless that they got rojas yeah it's, it wasn't bukowskis and it, it wasn't uh seth heineken beer it mm. was um Corbin Martin, though. Corbin Martin's pretty good. Yeah. You know, I still think he's a reliever, but you know, he was he was part of that too. Um, and where they are in the rebuilding movement, I mean, look, Bukowskis is a guy that you might be able to find something. You know, one of their guys said to me, Hey, you know what? If we can unlock his lower half and get him to really execute, you know, get athletic, then we got ourselves a somebody better than Jesse Crane, who's a former reliever with the twins and the White Sox, right? Power arm, big um, time arm. If not, he could get hurt all the time. And and that's part of it, right? It's part of breaking it down both analytically as far as like the video, the video and some of the numbers that they'll show you, but with the eye test. Um, with a guy like Beer, they, they – um, first of all, they're a nationally team. Yeah. Okay? This guy has no – now I can do it, yeah. right? Now I can do no, it. He okay, has no This guy has no position. Value. He has yeah, no, no ability – he has no business anywhere else but the left-hand hitter batter's box, okay? No business whatsoever. And the Astros, credit to them, stopped posturing and figured it out, okay? And the Diamondbacks said, you know what? You guys want to take, you're going to take some money on away from us. We're going to give some of that. We want some prospects back, and that's how they get that. And Beer's the fourth guy. They're like, yeah, we got uh, Rojas. That's good. We want that deal. And we... uh we're not real interested in Tucker. Well, he's not available. Yeah, okay. Well, we're not just, fine. We're just not going to talk about him. We want Bukowskis because we think we can do some things with him. We definitely want Martin. We know he's further away, but we think he's got really good stuff. Uh, what else you got? Uh, I don't want some of that. I got that. Eh, I want some of that. I got that. Eh. Well, who knows? Maybe. Uh, really? You sure? All right, fine. I'll take Seth Beer. And that's how that happened. And all of a sudden now, I mean, I got told that I can't. <laughs> Do we, got, do we really need to go into this? I'm because listen, man, you are you are a guy who is a bitter ex-Major League scout. Salty. Who doesn't understand, who's, who's bitter about the game, moving away from your approach that it's analytics and you haven't embraced that. And you're a has-been and get you this, don't know anything. Let's get this right. Let's get this right. I hate my life. I hate it. I hate the fact I get to wake up every day and watch good baseball and talk to you about it and break down the, a big league team and, and deal with prospects all over the planet and go to nine, 19 different countries in six months. And I hate my family life. And I, oh, it, it's awful. I'm so bitter having to get in control over my own schedule. That sucks. Right? 
How, why would you ever want control of your own schedule and control of your own life? Oh, by the way, my relationships in pro ball, they've just grown. They've just grown. It's not like they've gone backwards. They've gone forwards. So now that I'll get off that box, I'll get on the other one. Seth Beer is a DH. He's a one-trick guy. I've been saying it from the beginning. He has no fit, no fit in Arizona, but he does have some kind of value mm-hmm. if they can figure something out and flip him again. My, my comp on him was Jeremy Giambi. Giambi might have been a better defender. This guy has no business with a glove. Like Bob Hamlin. Bob Hamlin is a guy that's way better. Look him up. Look yeah, him up. no. Cause, cause Former I'm, rookie of the year. He's got some of that salt I'm throwing. And look, look it up. Bob Hamlin. I love Bob. Didn't own a glove. Didn't need to. Didn't need to. It was batting gloves, a bat, a pair of glasses, helmet, and some shoes. And like that's, that's what he did. Showed up every day, took BP, and forget the rest of it. And that's Seth Beer. Might be a great kid. I'm sure he's a very engaging, nice person. It's got nothing to do with personality. This is pro sports. And, Lu- and Luno and the Astros did a great job mm. self-assessing the system and getting Arizona to make it their problem. Yeah. Okay? That's now their problem. What'd they get back? They got somebody that fits their window for two years, which for five years, I've been saying that was their window, is that they can't pay everybody on the backside. Now we're in the end of it. You know what happens then? It's called a reboot. And Luno... Decided to go for it with what limited prospects he had in the system. What limit? Say it again. Limited. Pro, you want me to spell it? No. Limited they're not, no, prospects. They're not the limited. They're not limited. That is uh, that is not true, Jeremy. That's what that's what Twitter tells me that they're not limited. And listen, Josh Rojas is just proof because you said aside from the top four or five guys, there was nothing there. I talked to a VP the other day. A VP. Okay. And the VP said to me. It's over. <laughs> what do you say? It's over. Two more years, leading the pack, and it's done. You, there's nothing that's been in the system behind that. And you can miss me with this. Oh, we drafted in the back, and we dra- stop. You know why? Because there's always good players in the back. Noah Naylor, where was he taken? Can we yeah. pause for dramatic effect? Wait, yeah. One pick behind. But I Seth don't know Beer. if that's a. I don't know if that's a good. I don't know if why? that's he's a, 18 and, and well, I. Well, here's why: because he hasn't done anything in the sense of comparatively to Seth Beer. But what I'm saying is, when, just saying. Try. I'm, Jeremy, I'm on your side. Okay, but when you're trying to establish this kind of argument, that's not the that's not the player you, you want past performance. I'm to, talking about prospects. Are I know, be but ready. what I'm saying is to to establish your argument, you need guys picked later in the round to based on past performance and history. If you're that's trying a, to make you know this what? argument, that's, that's what point. I'm saying. That's a good that's what point. I'm saying. That's I'm a not, good point. Um, Noah Naylor, Bo Naylor is a really good prospect and has tremendous upside. But I'm just saying, if you're if you're going to speak the language oh, yeah, of yeah. some of the people out there, right. they're going to say, "I don't want, I don't want to see in the future. Okay. I want to see results." In I'll the give past. you that. Ready? Okay. Adam Frazier, Pittsburgh Pirates, sixth round. Kevin Newman, first round by the Pirates, later in the draft. Um, I don't know. Let me see here. Uh, Cole Tucker, later in the draft. Um, how about Reese Hoskins, fifth round? How about Paul Listen, Goldschmidt? Mike, Mike Trout wasn't drafted 24. first overall. I know how that. How about Paul Goldschmidt, eighth round? Randall Gritcher, 23rd. Have I made my point now? Now you have. Thank you. Okay, so if I'm looking for prospects in the, bat, in, in, in the draft, I'm drafting players, and they don't always come from 1-1. Wait a minute. While we're at it, those three 1-1s, the only one that worked out was the one Bobby Heck drafted. Okay. The other one, one of them's at the house. That's how you open a business somewhere, a sandwich shop. I might go have a, get a bite. Sounds pretty good. But he's at home. And the set, the other one didn't work out because of an injury. And luckily, and oh, is it lucky, turned into Alex Bregman. Okay? That was Brady Aiken. And I love Brady. He's a great kid. Was in the house with him. Good family. Um, is, what it is, is what it is. Is what, is what it is. what it works. So while we're talking about, oh, they did so well. No, no. There's other things you can do from 25 and back or 22 and back. And that's really where they've picked for a few years now, right, is in that range. And if you didn't do a good job because you took guys that had one tool, now I can kind of, can I go back to Noah Naylor, instead of a middle-of-diamond defender who's tearing up, at least now he is, the Midwest League, right? As one of the youngest as players the youngest in the league, players which is league, extremely important. Who's going to stay right there, whose defense has improved as an impact bat, and his brother is a madman in the San Diego system in the big leagues right now. Don't get mad at me, bro. You made the pick. So as far as it's over, you got two more years. Ride it through. Greinke fits the window. Verlander's in that same window. Springer's in that same window. The only one that doesn't fit that window that they have right now on the mound is Cole. We go from there. So... Once again, Luno's very good at trades and very good at waiver claims, and he proved it. Mm-hmm. Seth Beer is somebody else's problem. How's he doing, by the way? Well, that was my next 
topic, but can I give a quick Bob Hamlin aside real quick? Yeah. So here's a great story about Bob Hamlin, and I pulled it up on the LA Times because I know it, but I just want to get the wording correct. On a warm spring night in Toledo, Ohio, while playing baseball for a team called the Mud Hens, Bob Hamlin, the 1994 American League Rookie of the Year for the Kansas City Royals, hit an infield ground out, jogged off the field, kicked a bat, and told his manager, Gene Roof, I'm done. The manager asked, for the game? And Hamlin answered, no, for good, and walked into the clubhouse for the last time. Sounds like Bob. It's a pretty good story. Sounds like Bob. So. Now, Seth Beer. I looked this up the other day, and granted, I know it's a very small sample size, but thus far, Seth Beer in 11 games for Jackson of the Southern League. Hold on, let me sit down. Oh, I'm sitting. 11 games, 12 strikeouts, a 205 batting average, 590 OPS, and two extra base hits. Jeremy, can you school us on the difference between the Texas League and the Southern League, and perhaps why the numbers may not be as good? I'm just, can I shake off my bitterness for a minute? Just... Let me just shake that off because it's 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 cloudy. It's a judgment. small sample size, though. So the Texas League is a very hitter friendly league. Always has been. Always has been. Always, always has been. And the Southern League is not so much. Typically, it's better pitching. Typically, it's tough. It's tougher ballparks, and you have to learn how to really hit down there. And the Texas League can get away with mistakes. You can get off the end of the bat. Ball goes out of the park. You can um, pitchers the ball doesn't feel the same out of their hands because it's different weather, right? So. It's just a hitting league. It's like the Cal League versus the Florida State League. Yep. It's a different league. And just for your analogy, the Cal League is what we call the airport league Mm -hmm. because the ball, it's it's elevated ballparks and the ball flies everywhere. Pitchers have struggle, hitters don't. Same thing in the Florida State League. Florida State League is hard to hit in. Yes. So somebody hits well there, got a chance they're going to play a little bit. And a lot of that has to do with A, the weather, but B, you're playing in spring training ballparks. For sure. For sure. So Seth Beer, in, in, in adjusting to a new league, Mm-hmm. It's still double A, right? It it's is still double A. Should be tearing up the cover off the ball, and I don't. It's not anything about. Well, if he's as good as everybody says, yeah, he yeah, he should be. But he's also a college kid that went in the first round with historic production. <laughs> so he should be tearing the cover off the ball. Now, as far as what he's doing, so you know, we don't want to wish him ill. No, no, but no. we're just being honest about it. And so, I'm not surprised to see him struggling. I do think he's going to hit well all the way through AAA. I think the big leagues is going to play in the mm-hmm. big leagues, but it's going to be a very difficult jump. And I think he's a lot like A.J. Reed and maybe Jeremy Giambi, the best case. And in his defense, sometimes you get to a new organization, although I think this early on, they'll probably just let him be, right? Go hit. Yeah, go hit. Go hit. Um, my guess is he'll have better numbers in the Pacific Coast League for obvious reasons than he would in the Southern League. Well, the PCL apparently has a home run explosion well, this year. Well, AAA, all of AAA. Yeah. and that's, All of AAA, and baseball. That's, that's the baseball that are using the same yeah. ball in the big leagues now, right? Yeah. Now, J.B. Bacoskis is also Seth's teammate, and in two games, he is... Um, Pitched seven innings, and he's allowed six earned runs on 10 hits. The league is hitting 345 off him. Uh, 11 strikeouts, so I've got to believe that he's right around the plate and probably too much around the plate. But that's just an early observation from I the could, stats. I heard he couldn't wait. Oh, <laughs> boy. Do we really want to go there? I just Sometimes you need to change the scenery. I heard he was like, oh, where am I going? Like pack, I was, he was out like five minutes later. He had his, his home, hotel room packed, got home, packed up, his, packed up his apartment, called his mom, sent a telegram. He was out. He was gone. Email, text, Twitter. Twitter bio was changed. <laughs> Four seconds. I got traded. Anyway. Um, but again, good for them. I mean, they get a fresh start if you look at it that way. Yeah, and- I, I just – I don't um, – Bukowskis is somebody – Bukowskis is somebody who they believe in, but he they understand he's a reliever. Yeah. And they're gonna let him start the rest of the year. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't have him work on some stuff in the offseason and take him to AAA as a reliever. So to recap, Jeremy has always said Seth Beer was a DH, Jeremy Giambi, and JB Bukowskis reliever. It is what it is. All right. Um, what do we do? How about this? We do our, um, go back to one of the staples of the podcast. It is Jeremy's past scouting reports. This one is from 2013. Yeah. And the reason I'm picking this one is because it's from an Oakland athletics prospect and a guy who was a first round pick. He was second overall. And with the Astros playing the Oakland A's, I figured why not? That report is from high school. Yeah. To be clear. It is. 
You called him Andrew, his given name. Yes, sir. AJ Puck. Four starter in a major league role. Big physical lefty with velocity. Velocity in the tank now, more to come. Long body with some softness that he'll be able that he will be able to manage. Uh, levers and extra large hands and feet, depth to his breaking ball when he gets in front of it, sharp bite that will be enough in the future, needs to get more consistent with his release point and hand slot, change up with good arm speed, sell and fade at the plate, fastball is tough to lift down in the zone, room for refinement, his best days are ahead. Out of high school, you said take him in the third round. Your major league comp, well, body comparison was Joe Kennedy. Yeah, Joe... um... So this guy reminded me of Joe. Joe got rest him, um, died some years back. But um, big, physical, a little slow twitch, you know. He figured he was going to throw harder, but not overpowering as far as everyday starter role. Now in college, he was up to ninety nine. Yeah. Okay. I at Florida. At Florida, I don't. I don't. Didn't see him pitching there. I, I don't now either. I think that's part of the reason why he blew out in Tommy John. But. April twenty eighteen. Tommy John. He's um, he's pitched pretty well. He's in AAA right now and. Um, Getting closer to a possible Yeah, he can pitch. He, fit, he fits in the middle to the back end of a rotation. I mean, look, he's probably better than that just because that's the rule, right? You have enough humility to write a report. First supervisor first supervisor told me that um, the minute you hit submit, you're wrong, right? So <laughs> he's right. He was right. You're wrong. But, no, he's, he's, a, he's a pitch in the big leagues, but I think he's a middle to back end rotation type starter. It's going to eat some innings and pitch 91-93 and – you know, get guys out. That's what he's going to do. They have him doing both. Um, he's been a starter and reliever. Uh, here's a video on an M- uh, major league. Here's a video on uh, minorleaguebaseball.com has him going 98. But again, everybody does that as, now, a, so. as a reliever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. I don't know. I, I'm not certain. Well, it must be because he's pitched. Uh, ev- yeah. All, all, everything out of the PCL for him has been. Um, out of the bullpen. Out of the bullpen. Yeah. That so. makes sense. That makes sense. All righty. Um, what else? Anything? I love this outfit, by the way. You got new your balance. old New Balance, it's a new balance um, special. Wow! Mix Look it up at for, that. Mix it up for you. I had to match the labels. Wow! Yeah. White top, blue blue pants. I got white shoes on. Mm. Hey, hold on a minute. Wow! We got New Balance socks mm. right there. Can't say I'm not Brandon Wright. MB Nation. Make your name, Jason. Make your name. Wow. Okay, I know. You look good, man. Uh, you look good. Uh, it's comfortable. You know, it's comfortable. It's nice. These are easy to relax in. I got some, I got a G-Form shirt on though, but yeah. they're, they're a supporter as well. Well, so. before the podcast, we talked about makeup for you. Cosmetic. Yeah, we yeah. need some makeup. So Jeremy. A shiny dome. Yeah, I have the same thing. I have really oily skin, so I have to, uh, I'm constantly dabbing powder and stuff on me. I can me. see it in my computer. So when when you're on television, you shine a little bit, so we need to we need to like send you over to the yes, like a star. That's awesome. Uh, send you over to the makeup counter and get you some. Uh, I, get you I some can't do stuff. it. Why can't you do it? I'm just not comfortable with it. Guys do it all the time. I understand. Models just... do it. Television people do it. You're gonna walk in there. Pep talk. You're gonna walk in there. You're gonna say, "I am somebody," <laughs> and you're gonna feel good about yourself. <laughs> and you're gonna walk up to that counter. You're gonna say. Hi, I'm Jeremy. Can you help me with some makeup? So you're telling me... That now, I, gotta, I wouldn't give my name, but... Okay, so you're telling me i got to walk up with a straight face, no glasses. Dude, I do it all the time. Apparently, apparently i got some raccoon from being out in the sun. Yeah. So i got to get that covered, too. You're telling me... It's wa- not a big deal. All right. It's not a big deal. Okay, I'll do it for you. You just walk up and just say, listen, um, I need some makeup for... You could say modeling. You could say television. You could say theater. Whatever. Well, I'm going to say it. No, I'll you want to say television. Uh, oh, yeah. Say no, television. I'm, I'm going to puff my chest out and say, <laughs> I need some makeup for TV. I got TV every week, and this has to... So I'm, I'm going to get that done for you. For, mm. I'll get it done by And Sunday. then she'll say, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know if we can help you today. <laughs> I'll get it done by Sunday. All right. All right. Well, no, seriously, that um, is something that we've noticed, that we gotta we got to knock down that shine yeah. on you a little bit. Yeah, I know. So. It's all that sun. Well, it. you know, I, frankly, I'm... I'm surprised you shine that much because you're so bitter, Jeremy. Oh, you're, you're so bitter. It's a big salt shaker. Like on the back of my jersey in Fenway, it's not going to have a number. It's going to have a salt shaker. I'm just going to go with that. You could be the salt bay of... Yeah. Yeah. All right. But nobody runs out of salt. No, yeah. I'm around. All right. 
Got anything else to no, say? No, I'm good. I'm I think, good. I think, to be honest with you, I think that will probably the, be the most popular part of the podcast. The makeup part? The makeup part, yeah. yeah. Okay. People like behind-the-scenes stuff. That's pretty behind the scenes. It is very. I got to go to a counter scenes. and buy some makeup. It happens for me. All you have to do is once you get it, then make sure that you have your uh, keep the box because then you can order online. Yeah, I do it's it just again. A lot easier. Well, yeah. I mean, it's not. It, it doesn't. This isn't last a one time thing. This is something I. Have well, to it replenish. is. No, it is. It is one time At to go counter. and get it. So after that, I can. Although you get really dark when you're out in the sun, so. You know, you may have to get a little bit of a, a an adjustment. But that picture I think we you'll took be all right. with Paul and Matt that night, mm-hmm. like I was. Dark. It was, it was purple. You were purple. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right, everybody. For Jeremy, I'm Jason. Thanks for listening to the Extra Basis podcast.